You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. And on today's episode, we are going to tackle how to quit your job professionally. You ready for that today, Ricky? I am. I can't believe we have to do an episode on this. But then again, I do believe it. Well, wait a minute. You're an HR guy. This is what you've done. What 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 would what would surprise you at this point when it comes to HR issues? Anything? Not really. Not really. It, it, it's uh I the reason I stayed in this position for such a long time, you know, in HR is because there's something new that comes up that just when you thought you've seen it all, then another day comes. So yeah, I'm never surprised. That's right. Well, you're 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 the HR guy. I'm, I'm you have know, been in staffing for 20 years, so I, I would agree with you as well. There, there, <laughs> you do think you've seen it all until you realize you haven't. And so, like to your point, you don't really get surprised anymore. Um, but what we want to do today is is help people understand how to leave gracefully. Maybe, maybe that's the, the way I'll phrase it today, because um, you can you can do it well and you can do it poorly, right? And and the difference is in many respects what it will follow you through the rest of your career that's right. um, and your life, really, in, in terms of relationships. And that's hard to consider when you're upset and or in, you know angry and frustrated and, and ready to just get out of there where every day seems um, like it lasts for a year. <laughs> I mean, we've, I've been there. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been in that situation where walking in or, or the, you know, the dreaded Sunday night, right? Yes. Where you just think, <laughs> oh, gosh, here I, here I go again. You've, have you, have you experienced it? I, so I've, I've, I've shared with you that one of my favorite shows of all times is the Sopranos on HBO. I absolutely love that show. And I had a love-hate relationship with that show because that show came out on Sunday nights on HBO at a time that I was really unhappy with my career. And I mean really unhappy. I had that Sunday burn on your stomach and your chest right after watching a great show of The Sopranos. And yes, I, I've been there before, Pete, and it literally is the worst feeling in the world. Yeah, it's not a feeling that you want to last. Yeah, it's not it's one not. that you you want to let linger and and live with, and that is very true. That's very real. But it's you know, when you decide to leave your job, you sh still really need to consider what is going to be said about you after the fact. Yeah, you know, yes. what um, what's going to be the lasting memory of you as an individual, as a professional. Um, and that's a real thing. So, you you know, it's a, it's a, it's a balance. So let, let's talk uh, about this. How do you handle, you're in the situation, you, you're, you're very upset. You, you know, you, you don't like your manager, you, your environment's bad, you know, every day does seem like torture and you just have to leave. What do you do in that situation, Ricky? What's your advice to, to, to someone who can't get out fast enough? Um, but, and so they put in notice Tell them why. Convince convince someone that they should stay for two weeks. They should offer two weeks because that's what we're recommending, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get the mm -hmm. put the card ahead of the horse. That is what I'm recommending for sure. Me too. Always offer two weeks notice. At um, least. At least two weeks. At least two weeks. Talk about that yeah. for a second then. At least because look, it, it's it's I am on the camp that you should always, regardless how you feel about layoffs are are handled, which is a whole different story. You should really give the courtesy of 14 days for the organization to find a replacement or to make the necessary adjustments, at least. Now, at a much higher position and a more strategic position, a valuable position, that that if if they leave, they may need to give more time because that position was so valuable or so in, uh, uh, critical for the organization, they're going to need more time to adjust for that absence. So that's what I'm saying. At least the higher up you go in an organization, the bigger the, uh, the notice you should give, in my opinion. I'm glad you pointed that out because it, it's mm -hmm. harder to replace someone who's in a role um, that, that's, that's either a niche or mm -hmm. has a unique set of responsibilities. And, um, yeah, the, the more courteous you can be in, in that, um, in that scenario, it, it will, I, I believe it pays off. I, I believe yeah. it follows you. And I have uh, a number of examples that I immediately think of in a conversation like this of people who left in the best possible way. And, and, and some who haven't, uh, that I've been mm -hmm. involved with and that feeling doesn't go away. It lasts yeah. forever. <laughs> um, and it's not, I think people, you know, 
there's a tendency and it's natural. And I, I completely understand to say, Hey, they, the company doesn't deserve it, right? The manager doesn't deserve um, that professionalism because let's say they haven't been professional in their, in their treatment of, um, of the, of the person who's leaving. But that's not why we're recommending, at least that's not why I'm recommending you give proper notice. I'm recommending it for, for your own self-interest because being in staffing, I, I, I will, I will, tell you that we check references. Um, yeah, you know, we're asked that our clients check references. We're asked to check professional references. And if you not, it's not about, you may not get a, a, a bad one, but you need a good one, right? I mean, no comment I mean. <laughs> is pretty telling when someone is, you know, refuses to, um, to say whether an employee is eligible for rehire, and in many cases you will not be. Most cases, if not all, when you when mm -hmm. you leave without notice, um, so that alone is enough of a red flag to at, at times to prevent you from being employed um, in your next job. So there's you know, to me it is it is a self serving thing, um, if nothing else. Yeah, it, it's it is it is, but. I want to touch on something you just said about the manager, because I know a lot of people out there would say, you know what, if I got a crappy manager, I'm just going to leave. Forget that manager. They don't deserve my two week notice. That may be true, but you got to be above that because not only your manager suffers, who do you think is going to do all the work? Your colleagues, they're going to suffer. A lot of people above and beyond or not above and beyond, but other than your manager are going to, to suffer. So think about that as well. But yeah, don't burn any bridges. And Pete, I, I had a conversation with somebody about this last week who says it's illegal to blacklist somebody. And I'm like, says who? <laughs> it's not illegal to blacklist anybody. If you don't want, as long as it's not a violation of the law, for example, you blacklist somebody because they're Hispanic or they're a woman or they're a man, that's different. To blacklist somebody because um, they they just left and didn't give proper notice, that is perfectly legal. And I totally support that because now you can't trust that person. You can't trust them on a project. So you are burning a bridge. Right. And that that is the the big takeaway we hope everyone has from this who's listening is, is it, um, it burning the bridge and you want to avoid. Yeah. Now, we said, uh, I think we both said in a different way that you should do this every time. But there are exceptions. Are, are there not? Can you think of any? I, I have a few that come to mind, but but I I, I do think there are exceptions, uh, as there are to pretty much any rule in the workforce. I've got two of them that come to mind, and the first one is more serious. So to leave without any notice, if you are in danger and nobody's doing anything about it, then yes, you have to think about your, your safety is always paramount. So yeah, I'm not, if I'm in danger because I'm afraid of a coworker, I'm not going to give a two week notice if, if the organization isn't doing anything about it. So that's one of them. That's a more serious one. The other one, it, it, this happened to me about 10 years ago that we had somebody who just started working for the organization on Monday. And on Wednesday, they decided to give their two week notice. And I told the person, I'm like, you know, I'll accept it right now. <laughs> to, wind, to wind down their two days of work. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I'll accept it right. And the person got upset. And I told him, look, you have to understand that from my perspective, from our point of view, we need a two-week notice to help us transition things. We, we, you're not done with training. Why continue training you for the next three weeks or two weeks if you're going to leave anyway? It, 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 it's just, just better to cut it off right now. So that's the other one that I would think. That, that's a that's a great point. So that you should offer it, mean it when you offer it. I've noticed a trend over the past um, few years where people offer it, assuming because because there are certain scenarios where companies will immediately say, like the, the one you just described, someone's two days into a job. Yeah. There's no reason for them to stay around when, when those two weeks are going to be training yeah. right, the, on the company's What's dime. The that, that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> um, it, it, certain sensitive positions, sales, for example, is a common one where mm. if you're going to work for another sales organization, it, yeah, the employer probably doesn't want you hanging around um, any any longer than necessary if you're not motivated to to produce in the job that you were in. And and so there's there's lots of roles where um, it's a it's almost a given that if when someone puts in notices, so to say they're going it's going to be their last day. Mm. But even in those scenarios, you never know, um, and you shouldn't assume 
even if you expect that they'll ask you to leave right away, when you put in that two note, two weeks notice, mean it, and then plan to to work as hard in those final two weeks as you did in your first two weeks, because again, it's not for the benefit. And you 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 bring up a great point. Yes, does it help your peers? And if you have friends that you're going to be leaving behind, mm-hmm. absolutely. I mean, that's that's a noble thing to do. But I'm I don't even need to to get there for this mm-hmm. advice. I, I just want to make the point that. It will be how you're thought of, and it will follow you. And it may that may be really hard to to see in the moment, and say, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm not looking forward. I'm not, I don't care that, about the far advance. I just don't want to show up one more day, and we, yeah. you know, they're not they're not deserving of it. Yeah, but you're deserving of of a better reputation than that. That's right. Uh, as an individual, and that's what you need to protect because if you lose your reputation professionally, that's something that is almost impossible to regain. Um, and and unless it's it's one of these exception periods and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more you got to got to suck it up grind it out that's that's absolutely hard. and it's hard to tell you this though but it is hard but it's definitely doable let me tell you a quick story when and i and i'm going to call her out by name and i'm going to tell her that i'm calling her out by name it's a positive story one of my former employees her name is Kayla right and 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 here's what she did she submitted her two week notice and she worked it all the way to the, I mean, she worked just as hard on her last minute on her two week notice as she did on her first day to the point that we were all going on the entire HIT, HR team was going to go out to, uh, to uh, uh, do happy hour to, to, you know, to send her off. She was late to it. Why was she late to it? Cause she was still working Pete. <laughs> that is that right there is the kind of employee that I would welcome back with open arms. And that's exactly what happens two years later. Two years, because she left because she wanted to spend some time with her family. And then two years later, she just gave me a call. We had breakfast at Kiki's. Honestly, I didn't have to interview her because I knew what she can do. And we welcome her back with open arms. That's how you leave a business. That's such a great example. Um, Mm -hmm. Couldn't come up with a better one myself Mm -hmm. than that because it just tells the story. And you will remember Mm -hmm. Kayla for that. Forever. Absolutely. And that, and so will everyone else who was around mm-hmm. and people, pe- other people will leave. Uh, you know, it's not just that organization, the, the people who, who experience that departure, good or bad will, will remember and take that forward elsewhere. And so it's just, it's it, over the years. I mean, since I've had, you know, I, I you know, entered the professional world in 1993. So a long time ago, and I run into people in different uh, industries, different companies that I never would have imagined in the past, five years ago, 10 years ago, in my case, 20 plus years ago, even people show up and reappear in your life. And you know what? You never want to, this is kind of one of my rules of thumb, always be in a position where you don't have to avoid someone that you run into in public, right? Because of how you left that situation. Are you going to, and when everyone knows, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, you see someone, are you, ducking, are you ducking behind the corner? You know, if you see him at the mall, ducking into the next store, if, you, if you're coming down the hallway. I'm HR, Pete. I avoid a lot of people in public. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's something that, that you know, I try to think of always in these scenarios. Is, is and, and, and that was really born because I'm a, you know, as a career salesperson, I would, I, this, this is a thought that was planted in my head you know, years ago. Is not everyone is nice to salespeople, it turns out. I know that may be a shock to hear. Um, but not everyone treats salespeople as um, you know, as as equals at, at time. Mm. And I used to it, when that would happen to me, and it did on occasion, I would think, what if I end up coaching your your kid in basketball or soccer, or they end up on, you know, It'll like be being odd, buddies right? with one of one of my kids <laughs> and, and they you come over have to come over to my house. Like, what's gonna <laughs> happen? And you know what? For things like that have happened. <laughs> to some degree, Pete, so it happens to me all the time. I run into people that I've terminated in the United States and in Canada. I share with you. I was in Niagara Falls, and I heard teach, and I look over, and it's some guy I fired. I fired from the fire department, and my wife was like, "Really? Internationally, people find you? That's interesting." And I'm like, "Don't be so dramatic. It's Canada." It's, so, <laughs> so. Re- other reasons to leave. So you mentioned being in danger. I think that's that's that should yes. go without saying, but we need to point it out anyway, because we did say always give notice, always 
with some obvious exceptions, if you're in danger, if you're being abused in any way, verbally, you know, mentally. Now I, I will, I will say with that one, that doesn't mean you're being pushed hard at work and you're being, you know, the, you know, you have heavy demands put on you an expectation of, 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 of achieving certain um, metrics or whatever it might be. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. That, that may be feel, that may feel stressful to you and, it, and, and that's real, but that's where in, in a situation like that, because let's be honest, if, 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 someone is dreading coming to work and, and, and feels that that they're in a bad environment and they need mm -hmm. to get out of it. It's usually because of pressure and, and, and it's put on in the workplace or in, in many cases it is anyway, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean the employer's bad. That doesn't mean that the manager is bad. That's just means the job is a bad fit for you. As an individual. Exactly. That's what I wanted to say because it's, you know, if somebody is being pressured at work to do better, that's not harassment. That's not a toxic work environment. That's what the work environment is supposed to be. And if you're not willing to improve those skills and meet that demand, yeah, quit. I I rather you self-eject than you put somebody else through the process of doing it for you. So that's why I wanted to jump in and say that piece. It, it's yes, if if you're being pressed to do better. That is, that's the nature of the job. That's what people, that's what leaders are supposed to do, right? Move the needle from A to B. But if you're not willing to meet that demand, do not put the organization in, in the position to let you go. You should just self-eject and find something that's better suited for your skill set. That's it. That's it. That's right. Um, right. So when, when it's time to give notice, mm -hmm. how, how should you do it? How do you recommend that someone oh. um, you know, deliver that message? You, you have, you have email, you have text, you have you have phone calls, you have in-person, although in-person physically is harder to come by these days, these days for a lot yeah. of roles. Um, but what, what is your general advice on, on how that should be initiated? From my perspective, I, I love personal conversations, right? So whenever I resign, I've always gone to the person and say, hey, let's talk. Let's have a conversation. I want to let you know what's about to happen. I, I, I'm not going to say it like that, but I get really personal with them. That's easy for me, Pete, because I'm an extrovert. That'd be easy for you because you're an extrovert. But I want to reach out to the introvert, to the ones who don't like that kind of conversation. Go with what's comfortable for you. But let me tell you, those five minutes of you stepping out of your comfort zone to really have that personal conversation with that leader will leave a lasting impression with them, especially if they know you don't like to have those conversations. So if you want to leave on great terms and you want to show that this is really serious for you, still do it in person if you can't. Because like you said earlier, in the past three years, it's been very difficult to do that. Um, but that's what I would recommend. I would never recommend it um, with, with a text. I don't know of any situation professionally where I would want to separate any kind of employment one way or the other via text. Yeah, I, I, I phone call obviously secondary, but that's just my take on it because I'm an extrovert. What do you think? Yeah, I know. I agree. I think the more personal, the better um, that the you can do it, you know, live in, in person. That's mm -hmm. preferred. Um, I think you could write a letter for someone who, you know, depending on it, it, so much is dependent on the, the nature of the relationship with your boss, how long you've been there, what role you were in. But I think you could, I think it's okay to initiate the conversation with a, um, with a resignation letter. I uh, agree. It's, I agree. Because yeah. you know the, the the question is, how, how do you bring that up initially? Uh, you mm -hmm. know, do you schedule a meeting and uh, uh, do you do it? Uh, you know, what do you what do you put as the subject of the meeting, right? It, it, where you're not going to be disingenuous, like meeting about coffee. me resigning. Well, I think you just let the cat out of the bag. So let's get coffee. Yeah, if we uh, have coffee, I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah, we we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not you, it's me. I don't know, but <laughs> the the I. I I think a resignation letter is is it in a what I would recommend is, is what you recommended. Do it live, even mm -hmm. if no one likes those conversations. I mean, some people do. I mean, if if you just were, you know, offered to to if you just won the lottery and you're leaving uh, because of that, you're going to like that conversation, I guess. But um, 
it's still it's still a breakup of sorts, uh, uh, you know, not not to be dramatic. And so it is emotional. It's hard, just like getting a job offer and accepting a job is emotional. It's it's a meaningful thing. It's it's how you earn a living. It's where you spend your waking hours during the the you know most of your waking hours. So it is a it is an emotional thing um, to varying degrees. But where possible, I would recommend writing the letter, having it prepared, then then having the conversation live. It doesn't have to be drawn out, but people appreciate that. Getting a getting bad news out of the blue written is not, is not fun. Um, none none of it's fun. I'm I'm just I'm thinking through all the conversations I've had on both sides of this fence when I've put a notice or or had someone resign and really every situation is unique, but we have lots of uh, letters uh, and advice on how to write those letters, templates for the letters on zengig.com. So please check those out. You don't have to start from scratch. We, you, you could almost just plug in, you know, state your name on, uh, on making our, it on easier. Letters, but, <laughs> but, but make it somewhat personal. You don't have to go into detail. Um, the other thing I would recommend for, for uh, I'll, so those, so if those are the do's, the don't that I would you know say is, um, don't don't offer criticism on, unless there's some benefit to it, right? Where something can be done about it. You know, where mm. if you, you know, I wouldn't recommend criticizing your peers, for example, your coworkers. Um, you know, I wouldn't go out with that. I if the if it's the work conditions or the hours or the the job itself, mm. great. And even even if if you can you know, talk about, Hey, look, I, I really didn't like this. Here are some examples of things I didn't like. I will, I, I feedback is valuable. Feedback is really, really, you know, um, appreciated a lot of times, but make sure it's not just for the sake of take, of, of taking shots oh, at, at someone yeah. or something. I, I don't know if that's, that's a, that's a really good point, Pete, because it, it's, it could, it, it will come across as that, right? Because one of the questions I would have is, why? How long has this been happening? Oh, eight years. Then why <laughs> right. is this the first right. time we're hearing about this, right? But then I would I would dig deeper in that because why did you not feel comfortable coming to us with this? That's important to me. It's important to me to understand that piece because I want people to be comfortable talking to us and bringing that to us. But I agree with you. If there is any benefit, don't bring it up. There has to be another way for you to bring that up where it would bring some benefit, i.e. the exit interview. And the exit interview is a great time to bring that up. But now from an, from a business perspective, an exit interview, and we've talked about that on the show before, it's already too late. The person's gone. So now right. you got to start looking at stay interviews. Can I throw something in there real quick, Pete? Because I think, I don't, I don't think you meant to do this on purpose, but I think you threw in another reason why people should not give a two week notice. Oh, what's that? Hitting the lotto. Oh. I mean, would you would you give a two week notice if you if you won eight hundred million dollars in the lottery? Well, that's <laughs> now, a, that's a <laughs> interesting well. one. Now, here's the thing: from an HR perspective, if somebody gives me a two week notice and it's because they won the lotto, I'm gonna look at them like. Really? I mean, really? what? why? Why? Just accept it right now, right? Just accept it right now and go. You're just going to make everybody mad in the office. <laughs> okay, so so back to back to this fictitious scenario, although it does happen every time someone wins the lottery mm -hmm. almost every week, they, they're faced with this dilemma. Um, well, remember, the main reason you want to give proper notice is so you're thought of well, after the fact, and you have yeah. other opportunities, and they're not, you know, that are go going to come your way. They're going to um, hate you anyway. You're a millionaire, Pete. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to matter. Eight hundred million dollars all of a sudden. Anyway. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think those those concerns are the same. That's a tough one because I would have, I'll of course say, yeah, you you still you still should, but is that going to happen? Probably not, right? Um, I will what, be honest. I'll, I'll let you know when 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 the lottery <laughs> hits, and then I'll. I will be honest. I will go to my boss, and I'm like, "Look, do you even want this? Let's be honest, <laughs> right? What kind of help do you want from me in this next two days, right? It's it's what can I do? Let me help you, That's right? right? I will try to offer some help, or like I've always joked around before. Here's my two week notice affected two weeks ago. <laughs> Well, okay, that is exactly. not that is not. No, we're not doing it. that. We're not. I'm just joking, folks. Yeah, it we're was it that. was post dated. 
<laughs> you didn't get the message on that. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I think the, 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 you know, the do's uh, we've covered any, any yep. other don'ts that, um, you know, other than, you know, when you leave, other than just what you said, don't take a shot at something unless it, it, the way you phrased it is, was really good. I think to, unless it's constructive and something can be done about it, you know, mm-hmm. don't, 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 don't say something just to, just to get it off your chest. Right. I mean, because again, it's, you could, you could go out and say how awful your manager was. Um, it will make, make you feel better in the moment, but that's not going to ultimately serve you well. Mm-hmm. So is it fair? Is it, is it appropriate to say, be, be bigger than that? You'll be better than that. And that's, that's hard because you, if you, if you've been, if all that you know, has been pent up and you, you're like, man, I can't wait till the day I can quit where I can say it's what's hard to on do. my mind. Yeah. Eh, okay. It probably won't make you feel that much better. And it won't, right? Because I've seen people quit really bad. And what I mean really bad is they make a scene out the door, right? Just, you know, they come in. Like, what's the biggest trend now that I see on TikTok? People going to Walmart and videotaping their mass, their their extravagant exit, going on the PA, saying all these things. And I see those videos, and I'm like, guys, this is digitally preserved. Right. This will come back and get you later. That's not the way to do it. You know, and let me address this piece because that this is easy for us to say, but I know there's people out there who really have a hard time dealing with these things, right? And they and they have other emotional things happening at home. And I do understand that what we're saying for you to do, regardless of how upset you are with the organization, you do have to take that high road. Please understand, folks, that I get that there's some other circumstances that are happening outside of work that really add to the anguish and the emotion. All I'm asking is that you quell those emotions and you think about the future, you think about your career to make sure you do what's best for your future. Yep. Well, I think that wraps it up then. I mean, we, so, so let's, let's in conclusion. Yeah. Then we recommend giving two weeks. We recommend meaning it in almost every scenario, go out in a professional manner, yeah, do it. Yeah, you know, with courtesy and grace, and and do it for your own um, self uh, 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 self serving reasons. Because mm-hmm. we want you to be thought of, and you you as an individual want to be thought of well, right? What are they going to say about you after you leave? And that you, you even if you did great for for a decade, man, if your if your last two weeks are a bust, and you and you're you, you go out, you know, getting on the the PA system. <laughs> And doing yeah, you know, something like that for, for for you know just for show, you'll regret it. You will. Um in, in almost every case. So go out, go out gracefully, uh, and professionally, and, and that'll serve you well over time. Not for their benefit, but but for your own. That's right. All right. It, it's I did it. It's exactly I agree with everything you said. All right. If you have any questions, you know, hit us up. We we love to uh um, you know, feedback and, and of course, rate us uh, on the show. And otherwise, Ricky, um, man, have a great weekend. You too. Have a good one. All right. Good thanks night. so much.